I am Jesse Dollimore, and this is The Conversation, brought to you by my twice-weekly podcast on iTunes and Google Play Music and Stitcher, wherever you find podcasts, I Doubt It with Dollimore. We'd love to have you subscribe to the podcast through whatever podcatcher you use, and join us over there. Take part in the conversation. We'd appreciate it. Today, let's talk about these traitorous and anti-American Confederate monuments and memorials. First, though, let's talk about what's going on right now in the news in New Orleans with the removal and eventual relocation of the White Supremacy Liberty Place Monument. This monument stood for 126 years and honored members of a radical racist white supremacist paramilitary group who terrorized the city of New Orleans fighting against the city's racially integrated post-Civil War police force in 1874. Well, in 1932, this inscription was added to the already heinous monument, which read, United States troops took over the state government and reinstated the usurpers, but the national election, November 1876, recognized white supremacy in the South and gave us our state. So, for 61 years, this monument memorialized and celebrated racism, and white supremacy. That is until 1993 when the monument was moved off of Canal Street and to another location due to construction and that disgusting white supremacist slap in the face to every black resident of New Orleans was covered with a new quote. So in a weak attempt to make a turd sandwich taste like cotton candy, the new inscription read, in honor of those Americans on both sides, who died in the Battle of Liberty Place, a conflict of the past that should teach us lessons for the future. And that brings us to today, when on Monday, the monument was removed and there are plans to put it where it belongs, a museum where it can be preserved and reflected upon as a reminder of the many, many mistakes that we've made. The time for it to go was long, long overdue. To quote the New Orleans mayor, Mitch Landrew, we will no longer allow the Confederacy to literally be put on a pedestal in the heart of our city. Good for him. And, you know, good for New Orleans. What's the next step, though? Well, I think that it's removing all of these ridiculous celebratory monuments to hate, ra racism, and white supremacy and the darkest first many years of our nation. For those of you white people out there, who think that this isn't a big deal, try to imagine if the roles were reversed and your distant relatives were owned as property, like farm equipment. Seriously, actually sit there and imagine if history was different and it was your flesh and blood relatives who were beaten, tortured, and murdered. If it was your great-great-grandmothers who were brutally raped by their masters over and over again, year after year, no one to go for, to for help, no escape, no reprieve. This is a perfect example of what white privilege is. These monuments and, and the history they represent is something that doesn't affect us because we don't have to think about it if we choose not to. It just doesn't affect us the same way. My ancestors weren't we're chained to the floor in the bellies of slave ships in horrifyingly unsanitary conditions for weeks and months at a time and thrown overboard like garbage when they didn't survive the journey. My ancestors were not mutilated, hung, and burned alive when they ran in natural and justifiable attempts for their freedom. And you know what, white people? Neither were yours. I venture to say that if the roles were switched, you'd be none too happy to be walking through the public spaces for which you pay with your tax dollars only to see these gleeful celebrations in the defense of those very horrors I just talked about. Like in Charlotte, where this monument stands with the inscription, a state and city's tribute of love in grateful recognition of the services of the Confederate soldiers whose heroism in war and fidelity in peace have never been surpassed. 
Accepting the arbitrament of war, they preserved the Anglo-Saxon civilization of the South and became master builders in a reunited country. Grateful recognition, services of the Confederate soldier, I think what they mean to say is that they're grateful there were men debased enough to fight and die so white people could own black people. That is sickening. And to credit their fidelity for preserving white civilization, is this 2017 or not? Look, I got news for you, Charlotte, North Carolina. No race is superior to another. Or how about this monument, also in North Carolina, honoring the traitors who fought against the United States in the Battle of Whitehall. The inscription on this abomination reads, the cause of the South was the cause of constitutional government, the cause of the government regulated by law and the cause of honesty and fidelity in public servants. No nobler cause did man ever fight for. Ugh. This is unbelievable. Let's not be fooled by this ridiculous attempt to whitewash that for which they were fighting. It wasn't for constitutional government or the fidelity of public servants or the rule of law. They were fighting for what they believed was their God-given right to own black folks and again to beat, torture, and dominate them. Their cause of owning human beings isn't a noble one. It is a wretched wretched embarrassment, a cancerous tumor, the removal of which was necessary for the future survival of our society. And listen, if you take issue with me calling them traitors or anti-American, let's take a look down at the bottom of this particular North Carolina monument and see whose name they are particularly choosing to memorialize. Who's that? Yeah, none other than the coward who murdered President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, John Wilkes Booth. Is he someone that we should be honoring in our public spaces? An assassin who shot in the back of his head the president who freed almost four million humans from brutal captivity and saved America from almost certain dissolution? The answer is clear and this monument along with every other one across the country should be removed. This is a matter of patriotism. This is a matter of morality and ethics. But moreover, this is a matter of basic human decency. Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking out my channel and this video. If you like what I do here and you appreciate it, go ahead and uh, click subscribe. And if you really like it and appreciate what I do and you'd like to, to join my Patreon family, there's another link there for that not just for the podcast. <laughs> it's also for YouTube. Thanks a lot.